However they died, and regardless of what they were up to, there were simply some ghosts you have to root for. They are probably victims of murder or maybe parents who desperately searched for their child when alive. Perhaps they were witches killed in violent ways many years ago. Whatever the case, they're stuck in our world and need a little applause, a bit of good news. Some good ghosts are gentle and friendly, while others are angry and vengeful. No matter their nature, when they died, something changed for these ghosts, leaving them in an in-between state, not people but always around you. Now and then they stick around just to help get their own murders straightened out, which isn't such a bad thing. Ruth Blay was a schoolteacher who delivered a stillborn child. Because she wasn't married, she didn't want to tell anyone and buried the tiny body under some floorboards in her school. A student saw this, reported it to authorities, and Blay was arrested for murder. After a hasty trial, she was hanged, dying just minutes before an amnesty arrived. She is said to haunt New Hampshire's Portsmouth graveyard with her child. Many townspeople thought the death penalty was too harsh and tried to defend her, but had no success. Sheriff Thomas Packer, who oversaw her hanging, is said to have moved up the execution time to go eat dinner. His entire family, including a daughter, died young after his death. This wasn't his only hanging. He also executed two other women for the same crime, concealing a bastard child. Not very cool at all. Under the surface of her refined exterior, Delphine LaLaurie was a serial killer. She was an affluent and stylish woman who owned a mansion with her husband in New Orleans' French Quarter in the 1830s. A fire swept throughout her house, revealing a secret attic room filled with horrors. Evidence showed that slaves were chained and tortured there, some meeting their death in that chamber. The true horror was for those who survived, dying among human remains. These ghosts are angry, and with good reason. The LaLaurie Mansion is probably the most well-known haunted site in New Orleans and has been resold multiple times due to supernatural occurrences. The LaLaurie family escaped unscathed, so these spirits are unlikely to find peace. After the fourth husband of Alice de Keiteler died in Kilkenny, Ireland, she was accused of causing their deaths by the combined offspring from all those marriages. The bishop, wanting to regain ecclesiastical power in the town, declared that there was a coven of witches and made de Keiteler its head. She fled town, but her maid was executed for witchcraft after being tortured into confessing. Some folks think the ghost is actually that of the servant, not de Keiteler herself. Either way, it shows that whenever church and law mix, they can make an unholy brew. In 2002, Lisa Poslins was working late at her office when she was violently raped and murdered. Janitor Rui Marquez was questioned, but a DNA test cleared him of any wrongdoing. Nonetheless, his response was crucial to solving the case. On two different occasions, Poslins' ghost appeared to him in a conference room setting, pointing out a black table. Marquez recalled that former janitorial worker Nelson de Jesus always wore black on the job. Police discovered that de Jesus had been harassing Poslins for months. De Jesus's DNA matched the evidence found at the scene. In the 1800s, when the daughter of an unnamed Rochester, New York woman went missing, the mother, thinking her daughter had been kidnapped and murdered, started searching miles around for her body. She searched tirelessly but with no success. Finally, she threw herself off of a cliff into Lake Ontario. Her ghost can occasionally be seen making its way across the park and is said to chase any man it meets into the lake or out. The prospect of not being able to find someone you love during your lifetime and after death must be awful. Here's hoping she will someday catch up with what she is after. Not all the ghosts at Disneyland are limited to the Haunted Mansion. The ghost of George is said to wander the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at the Florida theme park. It's said that he was a construction worker who helped build the ride and was crushed when either a beam fell on him or he fell from a high area. Officially, 
Disney does not acknowledge the ghost's existence. But it is said that if employees do not say good morning and good night to him, the ride will not function properly. Having to hear mechanical pirates belt out yard-long ditties for eternity doesn't sound like the happiest place on Earth to me. This guy deserves a little sympathy. The Myrtle Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana is home to Chloe, a young slave girl who was a governess for two children. Chloe did not resist the advances of the plantation owner because she was afraid he might send her out to the fields to work. One day, he caught her eavesdropping through a keyhole and chopped off her ear. To make herself seem useful, she baked some oleander leaves into a cake, thinking it would make the family sick and she could nurse them back to health. The poisoned cake ended up killing several family members, and the other slaves hanged Chloe to avoid punishment themselves. Chloe did not have a very happy life. All she really wanted was some freedom. Who among us hasn't made an innocuous error in the kitchen? It's said that the Green Lady once served in Stirling, Scotland. Mary, Queen of Scots, nearly perished under the flames when her curtains caught fire in the room where she was sleeping. The Green Lady saved her from disaster at the cost of her own life. She is said to wander the castle, a worthy task. Giving one's life for another deserves at least a thumbs up. In 1906, Grace Brown worked at the Gillette Skirt Factory and was having an affair with one of the owner's sons. When she got pregnant, she asked Chester to marry her rather than abort the baby because unmarried mothers were outcasts for life. The pair went to Big Moose Lake in the Adirondacks and rented a rowboat. The next morning, the boat was found, and nearby lay Grace Brown's body with a bruised forehead. Chester was tried and executed, but the ghost of Grace Brown still haunts the lake. People who have seen her ghost often feel a profound sorrow near her burial place. Her story was used as the storyline for the film A Place in the Sun, depicting her as an ugly shrew. One morning, in 1912, Mary Peckham found her neighbor's home in Villisca, Iowa, eerily quiet, with the doors locked from the inside. When she did not get a reply, she called the neighbor's brother to investigate. He unlocked the door and was confronted with a horrible scene. The Moore family, along with two of the children's friends, had been murdered with an axe. The case was not pursued due to terrible police management. Neighbors, friends, and townspeople came to see what had happened. The place was not properly sealed off by the police, who were unable to stop a mob from touching everything and taking souvenirs. Although DNA testing wasn't possible in those days, this is surely unfair to the victims. The ghosts who linger here will likely never get justice. In 1994, a strange thing occurred not far outside of Sacramento, California. A woman who had snugly fallen asleep woke up inexplicably convinced she must leave the house where she was living as soon as possible, despite the darkness of night. She roused her husband and hopped into her car, driving downstate on Highway 50. At some point, she noticed something on the side of the road and pulled over. According to the Paranormal Witness Program, she thought that she could see a nude woman lying near the edge of the road. The woman was bent over to one side her legs together with both arms behind her head. She looked ghastly pale and dead. The woman called authorities, but when the sheriff's deputy arrived, there was no nude woman or sign of one anywhere. Earlier that week, a young woman named Christine Skubish had started down the road with her toddler-aged son. Since it was too early to contact friends and family, everyone assumed they would eventually return. However, Christine's aunt began having multiple strange dreams. One account had her dreaming of a woman's outline at the back of a car with a child at its front. Since she had a history of prophetic dreams, she was worried and prompted investigators to search for her missing niece. While searching around Highway 50, they eventually found a child's shoe. At the bottom of an embankment, they found a naked three-year-old boy, alive but in a wrecked car. The mother's body, Christine's, was fully dressed, but dead, and her son had survived with nothing to eat or drink for nearly a week. The boy later recalled seeing a white, glowing sphere over the car and a shadowy silhouette. Others believed 
the naked woman was the ghost of the boy's mother, drawing attention to the accident, ensuring her little boy was found alive. I absolutely think that something very special happened out there, the deputy said to paranormal witness. A mother's love can make a difference, even from the afterlife. Zona Hester Shue was discovered dead in Greenbrier County, West Virginia, with her head at an unnatural angle in 1897. While the doctor was on his way, Shue's husband washed her body and changed her clothes, acting suspiciously by effectively hiding her neck from being thoroughly examined. Shue's mother had a dream in which Zona told her that she had been murdered. This dream, coupled with Shue's husband's strange behavior, persuaded the district attorney to reopen the case. When they disinterred the body, an autopsy showed clear bruises on her neck, and it was determined she died by strangulation. At her husband's trial, it was found that Shue was his third wife, the second to die. You have to give it up for a ghost who comes back from the grave to help solve her own murder. A famous ghost in England, Dorothy appears consistently at various locations at Raynham Hall, Norfolk, in a brown dress. Dorothy desired to marry Lord Charles Townsend, but her father would not allow it. Townsend married another woman, but after that wife passed away, he returned to Dorothy. Dorothy had an affair during Townsend's marriage, which angered him when he found out years later. It is said he locked her in a room for the rest of her life and would not let her see her children. Dorothy's ghost still wanders Raynham Hall today seeking the children she will never see again. The story of her death remains unanswered. Some say she was pushed down the stairs. Others believe her death was staged as punishment, and for some strange reason she is stuck with a brown dress. That's a ghost who needs sympathy. Ford's Theater, the White House, his tomb in Illinois, and Fort Monroe in Virginia have all known Abraham Lincoln in death. Even Winston Churchill is reputed to have had a run-in with Honest Abe. Although Lincoln was assassinated in 1865, a newly bathed and naked Churchill encountered him at the White House in the 1940s. Supposedly, they eyed each other with some embarrassment until Churchill said, "'Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage.'" Then Lincoln vanished. People who caught a glimpse of Winston Churchill naked deserve a lot more than a word of encouragement. Rhode Islander Dolly Cole has been described as a vampire, witch, and cross-dressing prostitute. Whatever she was, people thought she was weird and were afraid of her. It is said that the townsfolk killed her child by burning down her house, but how she died is not clear. Either she drowned in a nearby river or was murdered. Being different is not a reason for arson and murder. <laughs>